Hello, and welcome to Pop Culture Graveyard. This is our 100th episode. It's times like this, I wish I had a tuxedo t-shirt. If not now, when? If not me, who? I honestly never envisioned getting to episode 100. I began this channel during the lockdown to keep myself sane. It was the equivalent of midnight basketball. It was there to keep me off the streets. Now look at us, 100 episodes. Cube Barry Manilow looks like we made it. And to celebrate this 100 episode milestone, I'm going to be counting down my top 100 albums. You folks on YouTube are not going to see all of it. The entire list will be on my Patreon, but you guys are going to get a heaping helping of my favorite albums. First, a massive disclaimer. As usual, I gave myself lots of rules. No greatest hits allowed, no compilations, no box sets, and no live albums just studio albums released during the band's lifetime. In addendum to my disclaimer, at the 11th hour, I decided to cut out all jazz instrumentalists because too many great albums were being knocked off the list and I had just done a jazz episode. A disclaimer to the disclaimer, all rankings of great works of art are ridiculous and somewhat arbitrary. So remember to tell me in the comments just how many of my picks you had a problem with. So what follows is my personal, wholly subjective, top 100 albums. Okay, I'm not even going to say another word. I'm just going to jump in, because sometimes I have a tendency to go off on tangents, and then before you know it, you get further away from... Fuck! Before we get rolling, I just want to thank my latest patron. Thank you, Eric. You were the man, Mr. Blodgett, and I really appreciate you hopping on board. If you would like to help support the show and gain access to full episodes, please consider joining my Patreon. It is at patreon.com forward slash popculturegraveyard. And thanks. On with the show. Number 100. Boom. Rumors by Fleetwood Mac. Listing this album at number 100 means that I'm a little embarrassed by its inclusion, given that it's so basic. But it's basic for a reason. The songs are outrageously good. John McVie's bass playing is fantastic throughout. And Stevie and Lindsay's voices, holy hell. So it's on the list. So people of a certain age don't have to write me angry letters. Why do crazy people always use the smallest stationery? What's that about? Number 99, Reject All American, Bikini Kill. This is an outrageously good album. This, their final album, is a brilliant send off and is so accessible as to be bordering on pop punk at certain moments. Their feminist message was never delivered in such a sweet candy coating. Number 98, Slade by Slade. I have to tell a quick story. I was the DJ at Beauty Bar in New York for years and years and years. One Saturday, I'm in there spinning my records. This dude comes up to the DJ booth and he's sort of dressed like a pirate and he has a handlebar mustache. And he began to talk to me in a thick Ukrainian accent, love to the Ukraine. And he says, I love what you've been playing. Can you please play some Slade? And I'm like, oh, wow, that's cool. No one ever requests Slade. Yeah, I think I've, I got some Slade with me. And he's like, oh, great. He's like, Slade was the first band that got me into heavy music. And from there, I went into punk. I was like, wow, that's great. I could see Slade being a gateway to punk. We're talking a little more. He starts telling me about his band. And he tells me it's called Gogol Bordello. I was talking to Eugene Hutz, one of the most fun, energetic frontmen ever, birthed by the Ukraine, nurtured by Slade. Number 97, Neandra La Des, and usually just a t-shirt. This is the solo album by John Frusciante. He put this out when he was estranged from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I played this nonstop for two or three years and had to get everything that John put out from that point forward including really drugged out, damaged, off-kilter music. But I found it all fascinating. He was sort of like my Sid Barrett. If you're into more avant-garde stuff, this album will blow you away, such as his cover of The Big Takeover by Bad Brains. In his hands, it is a gorgeous, mandolin-laden ballad, and still somehow has the power of the original. Songs like Been Insane, Your Pussy's Glued to a Building on Fire. There just isn't another record like this outside of Captain Beefheart. When you're bored with most modern music, give this guy a try. I'm sorry, I can't keep talking like this. I gotta just fly. 96, number one record, Big Star. I don't even think I need to explain this one. 
just a gorgeous record that would not be denied on this list. 95, One Nation Under a Groove, Funkadelic. This is as accessible as it comes for Funkadelic, and it even includes the 45 of Maggot Brain. 94, Sticky Fingers, The Rolling Stones. The one Stones album I would play for non-Stones people. I had to get a Stones album on this list. Why not the one with Bitch and Sway and Moonlight Mile? Pretty much as good as it gets for the Stones. Number 93, Volume 4 by Black Sabbath. My personal favorite by them. So damn good. And a little jazzy. In all seriousness, this album totally rocks. And speaking of rocks, 92, Rocks by Aerosmith. A perfect hard rock album. Number 91, Juju by Susie and the Banshees. All of these albums make such strange bedfellows one after the other, but they're just going to have to get used to it. Number 90, Nilsson Schmilson, Harry Nilsson. This album is aging like fine wine. 89, Sound Effects by The Jam, perhaps their greatest collection of songs. 88, Benny Vidi Vicious by The Hives. These guys are a stunning live act, and they never captured that electricity of their live show better than on this album. And all the songs are killer. Number 87, Os Mutantes, their self-titled album, Os Mutantes. This is the Brazilian Outfit's debut. I wholeheartedly love this album. I wholeheartedly love this band. I could have picked any album by them. A Divina Comedia U Ando Meio Desligado, no, I will not say that again, is another one of my favorites. But song-wise, this playful psych LP establishes everything that the Brazilian outfit does wonderfully. It is charming as hell, and it had to make this list. Number 86, Midnight Marauders by A Tribe Called Quest. Everyone talks about low-end theory, and I think it's great. But for me, this is the album. This is the one I listen to on the regular basis. And I feel there are way more great Fife Dog moments on this album than on Low End Theory. And he's my guy. 85. So Alone, Johnny Thunders. No explanation needed. Number 84. Repeater by Fugazi. Jesus Christ. Repeater by Fugazi. Some of my favorite Fugazi songs happen before and after this album. But this album as a whole, I find to be Fugazi's strongest statement. Number 83, Ace of Spades by Motorhead. Hey, it's my list. If you don't know, now you know. Number 82, Dirk Wears White Socks by Adam and the Ants. This is the first incarnation of the band and it establishes everything great about the band. You can think of this era of the band as being Bow Wow Wow with Adam Ant instead of Annabella. The twangy guitar, the Burundi beat drumming, and the disco bass. All of the elements that Adam would ride to success later are already present, and it's a great album. 81, The Cars, by The Cars. What do you want? It's a perfect album. You don't like it? Write your congressman. From Sweet and Slick to Down and Dirty, number 80, Los Angeles, by X. <sighs> Getting to see this band perform live was a high point in my concert-going history, and this is somewhat of a different album than anything they did afterward. The first two albums, really. But this one is as raw as this band got. And producer Ray Manzarek caught lightning in a bottle. Number 79, Dare by The Human League. There's a reason this album was playing in Lester Bang's headset when he died. I wouldn't mind this being the last album I hear on this earth. Number 78, Gyrate by Pylon. A perfect post-punk album. A warning, you may not want to listen to anything else for quite a while. Number 77, I've been dying to say this to you by the sounds. This feel good LP has been indispensable to me during the lockdown. One song better than the next, and perhaps the most infectious sing along album in my entire collection. I unapologetically love this album. Number 76 The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars, David Bowie. A classic that needs no introduction. Not the last Bowie album you'll be finding on this list. Number 75, Run DMC by Run DMC. David Bowie would have loved being followed by Run DMC. That's how cool Bowie was. This 1984 album pioneered the hip hop album 
and made long players a thing in a genre that had up till then only rewarded 12-inch singles. Raising Hell is for posers. There, I said it. This is the album that set the hook for me. These local heroes from my childhood neighborhood not only made good, but took over the world. I am clearly a Run DMC fan, as you can tell from my attire and my Adidas. They walk through concert halls. Sucker MCs, It's Like That, Jam Master J, Hard Times, and other jams. This is as close to a perfect album as Run DMC got, without any of the jokiness that would infect later albums. And the hits keep coming. Number 74, It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back, Public Enemy. This is the nth degree of the perfection of the LP that I spoke about with Run DMC. This album forced everyone to take hip-hop albums seriously. Number 73, Double Nickels on the Dime, The Minutemen. This album, which has been out of print for a couple of years now, is actually getting a reprint and a remastering. So please do not pay the exorbitant prices for the SST album. That's just a little hint. This is perhaps, along with another SST double album I'll be getting to later, perhaps the greatest album that SST Records ever put out. It is mind-boggling how good this album is. You don't often tell someone, yeah, it's got like 30 or 40 songs on it. Just put it on and let it play. What, I don't have to skip around? No, let it play. So damn good. Number 72, The Pretenders by The Pretenders. Ladies and gentlemen, this is pretty much a perfect debut album. This is how it's done. Songs like The Weight and Mystery Achievement, Tattooed Love Boys and Precious are all I need to hear on this album. And I didn't even mention the big accessible hits, Kid and Brass in Pocket, a killer slash thriller of an album. Thriller. Yeah, it didn't make it. Number 71, 154 by Wire. Their debut, Pink Flag, is more influential, but this is the perfection of everything they had been working towards with their second album, Chairs Missing. And the songs are great. The 15th is perhaps my favorite Wire song, or it could be map reference 41 degrees north, 93 degrees west. How's that for a song title? This is one of the coolest post-punk albums ever, and it probably deserved a higher ranking. Number 70, With Sympathy by Ministry. I fear no reprisals. I'm even more partial to the European cover. I unapologetically love this album. I will not apologize. Stop making me try to apologize. Number 69, Machine Gun Etiquette by The Damned. An outrageously great collection of punk songs. This album is way more impressive than people think. With this album, the band proved that they could survive the loss of principal songwriter and guitarist Brian James. There aren't many bands where the bass player can turn into the guitar player and the band can actually thrive. Unbelievably great. Number 68, Bossa Nova by The Pixies. Yeah, I'm a little surprised too. Maybe it's just because all of the earlier Pixie stuff I burnt out on, but this is the album that I play on a regular basis. The song Rock Music is the best concert opener that this band ever had. And I hear that song and I feel like I could just tear down a building with my bare hands. It'll really amp you up. Valoria, Allison, Is She Weird, All Over the World, Dig for Fire. This is a great album with some of the band's best music on it. I feel this is a really underappreciated album by the band. And I want you all to know that I appreciate it. Number 67, Mask by Bauhaus. I know the debut LP gets all the publicity, but this album, I feel, is their best album. They really got the balance between light and dark perfect on this album. Number 66, Gravest Hits by The Cramps. Gravest Hits by The Cramps. This is an EP, it only has five songs on it, but I see this as The Cramps' purest statement. It's got some of The Cramps' best covers on it, The Way I Walk, Domino, Surfin' Bird, but for me, it's the one Cramps original on this EP, Human Fly, that sets the tone for their entire career. Great, great album. Number 65, Unknown Pleasures by Joy Division. There were years where I would have put this at number one on my list. I think it's amazing that it ranked as highly as it did now. This album is maturing with me. Hopefully, it had to make the list. Number 64, Head on the Door 
I can't keep talking about these albums. I have to just fly through them. Number 63, Naz Naz. I can't help it. This is an amazing album, and I'm comfortable with its placement. Listen to Under the Ice, and then tell me you have a problem with my placement. Number 62, Terror Twilight by Pavement. I think it's their best album. The songs, Cream of Gold, Spit on a Stranger, The Hex, come on. Number 61, Nevermind by Nirvana. You know, this album, I feel, is really played out. I don't need to hear Come As You Are or Smells Like Teen Spirit. But if you put Stay Away on the radio right now, I will lose my mind. A legendary album at this point. Number 60, Nothing's Shocking by Jane's Addiction. One of the bands that paved the way for Nirvana's success. Ocean Size, Standing in the Shower Thinking, Pigs in Zen, Jane Says, The Mountain Song. Ah, it's crazy how good this is. Number 59, Music for the Masses, Depeche Mode. I'm going. I'm just going to go again. I keep getting caught up. I want to talk about things. Gahan, Gahan, Gahan. Number 58, Aladdin Sane, David Bowie. Number 57, Green Mind, Dinosaur Jr. Number 56, The Specials, the debut LP by The Specials. One of my favorite covers. Speaking of covers, there are great ones on here, but the originals are really what keeps me coming back. Number 55, Boy by U2. It's hard to believe today, given the bloated corporate brand that the band turned into. But back in the early 80s, U2 was a really fun post-punk band. And that's a rare thing. Number 54, Transformer, Lou Reed. Satellite. <clears throat> God damn it, Bowie. I did an entire episode on this album. That's how much I love it. Look that up. Number 53, Murmur, R.E.M. They were sort of a different band here than what they turn into. And what they are here, I absolutely love. Number 52, Signals, Calls, and Marches, Mission of Burma. Some people swear by their later album, Verses, which is a full-length album. But for me, this smaller album packs more of a punch. Number 51, Argy Bargy by Squeeze. This album's placement proves that above all other components, it's great songs that get you placed on this list. To see the rest of the rankings in this week's episode, please join my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash popculturegraveyard or click above to hear about my go-to albums.